Hi, my name is Samuele Matteucci and this is my entry for the MOOC Circuit Bending Challenge 2016. Peanut1. It's called Peanut because that's the nickname me and my partner gave to our little boy when he cries because he looks like a peanut head. In this video I will show you some of the features of the Peanut1 as well as uh, a little bit of the process of making it and at the end I will put a little jump session just to explore the all the possible sounds that it can produce and well enjoy first of all here you can see two jack outputs for the two keyboards inside the two PSS 30 so uh, there are two different outputs and here you have the batteries so it runs on 9 volts but actually like the greatest part of the circuit runs on 6 volts and the 9 volts is just for the filters and the LED flasher this is the toy that I would like to modify let's go through some of the sound before uh, before opening it so this is something resembling a clarinet That's an electric guitar. Violin. Oh boy. Yeah, well, and so on, we have the xylophone, piano, banjo, and the harpsichord. So, beyond this happy music, I found a little bit of fuzz. and oops, some resonance that goes screaming if I turn up the pot quite nice so yeah right to spice up things I Breadboarded here a small LFO circuit. As you can see, it's full of. There, I should put a resistor. It's quite nice. Here, you can change shape.
and I found that there are two possible destinations so this is like the most evident but there is another one that works it's smoother but it's quite nice too yeah. nice another interesting thing is that if you start messing around with the pins on the main chip of the keyboard you can access the single notes played by the keys yeah they're all in group of eight and then uh, you have four groups of eight so in a total of 32 notes and that's the same uh, relating to the switches that control the choice of the sounds and of the rhythms so in the skip I found this keyboard here it was on a broken keyboard and I rescued the, just the keys and I was thinking of controlling uh, the notes and something else as well uh, with this keyboard because uh, the keys are slightly bigger so that's quite nice right the peanut one is made of two PSS30 by Yamaha old toy keyboards from the ages and I rehoused them in this case that is made of scrap wood uh, that I got from the skip uh, in the college where I work and I transferred all the functions that were in the small keyboard here uh, so for example from this section here you can select the sounds through a rotary switch and a push button here the green keys on the upper manual are the rhythms for the first keyboard and the second keyboard the yellow ones uh, will bring the tempo up and down the black key will stop the rhythm but also uh, will stop the internal clock of the two keyboards so for example, now I'll show you what I mean This is the first keyboard, now I'll bring up the second keyboard As you can see, uh, even if I'm playing C the second keyboard is playing another note If I do this, I'll do another note again Ok, now they're playing the same note, so this can be interesting and I guess it's because when you stop the clock then it will start again from a different point so it will shift uh, the data on the main chip of the Yamaha PSS30 so uh, on the second block I will play now just with the one keyboard then I will add the second one on the second section here we have the external clock that I built and it's based on a 555 timer chip and this allows you to have uh, pitch bending and other things it can be assigned to the LFO section and there is another one that here is called the tune because I didn't update the, um, the tags here but who cares they're just names and this controls the second clock that creates interferences with the first clock uh, as I will show you later so and this is fun because it can also be controlled by two body contacts that I have here with the banding, with the bands that I introduced here so the first one is some kind of fuzz filter fuzz really the second one is another lo-fi kind of filter with distortion so that adds a little bit of more body right 
Right, and same goes for the second keyboard, so it's all replicated, it's all double. Here, the tags are again wrong because I didn't have the time to update them. And this is another feedback, and it's done um, by short circuiting some of uh, the, the IC386 that is inside and it works as the amplifier. So, this one creates like a nice feedback, some kind of uh, oscillations that can be modulated through the pot but also through a light dependent resistance. Here I have a light and this light will flash also with the LFO as you can see. And <coughs> yeah, let's see what it does. Next to the different modifications that I introduced, there is the uh, LFO uh, that can be assigned to, to different parts of the circuits for both keyboards and it can also be uh, assigned to the filter that is on this side of the keyboard and it can be assigned to the clock as well, so let's see. Uh, now we have the filter. This filter can be uh, controlled through the LFO partially and it has an input for some control voltage in. Uh, I don't have anything now to play with but, you know, who knows in the future. Right, now let's try to get the same note on both keyboards. Ah, one thing, here the bookie on the upper manual is um, basically connects another capacitor to the clock, so it drops down. Here we have four orange keys that are uh, other bands. So more detailed information in the second part of the video as well. I will provide some schematics. And here, uh, these two red keys that uh, another uh, capacitor to the first band to the kind of fuzz. So let's now play around with this keyboard a little bit.